Hello everyone and welcome aboard this series on Codality Algorithmic Solutions. If you are watching this video, I will assume that you already have some basics in programming as we will need to know at least one coding language in which you could write your program. I'll be explaining solutions in two different languages, Python and C++, showing the main differences of basic coding between these two. So let's start with our first problem, the binary gap counter. As explained in the description of the problem that you can find on Codality website, we have to find the maximal sequence of consecutive zeros in any binary number. So for example, this number here has a gap of two zeros, while this one has two gaps, and the largest gap is the one with four uh, zeros. Some other numbers are without gaps. Here are two examples. This number has no zeros, and this one is lacking a second one digit in order to have a closed gap of zeros. So it's also considered as a no gap number. Now taking all of this into account, the solution is the following. Let's consider this first number. First, we read the sequence of digit from uh, left to right, and then we will increment a variable as a counter every time we read a zero digit. Then if we reach a one digit, we reset our zero counter here in our example, we are resetting the counter four times, but the first time has no effect here at this one, because uh, at the start of my sequence reading, the counter is zero anyway. But before each counter reset, we should compare the value of the zero counter with the current maximum. And we keep the so far reached maximum number of zeros in a separate variable. So I will have my counter and also I will have my maximum number of zeros that I have reached so far. Now let's check if our thinking works correctly for two exceptional cases. A binary number ending with zeros, since we do a comparison uh, and eventually we are replacing the maximum value every time a one digit is encountered. I mean this is how we thought our algorithm then there must be a one digit to apply this comparison. In this number, in fact, it's not the case uh, at the end. Well, it is the case here. We have those one digits, but after this big sequence of zeros, we don't have a one digit at the end. So this last sequence will not be accounted for in our uh, algorithm, which is correct. We move on to the next exceptional numbers, those starting with zeros. And in this case, it's true that the first sequence of zeros is followed by a one digit and this would trick our algorithm eventually and provide a maximum that is not a length of a gap contained between two one digits i mean if you look at the sequence it's ending with a one but it's not starting with a one so it shouldn't be accounted for in our algorithm eventually such a number would trick our algorithm and this sequence will be included in our calculation However, this form of numbers doesn't exist in our problem since those zero digits at the beginning can be removed without changing the value of the total number. So only this part in the square here is considered. In other words, we won't be encountering such cases in our uh, program. Now our algorithm is almost ready, so we can go and check out how it will be performing using Python and C++. So I will start with the C++ solution. We have to complete a function that takes an integer as parameter. So the first step is to convert our number to a binary number. And this can be done using this loop here. What you see, this is the while loop to convert our number into a binary number. Basically, we are dividing the number by two and keeping the remains of each division, the modulus of each division in a vector as long as my number n is positive. You should know that this method will convert to binary, but the digits will be saved in reversed order inside my v vector here. For example, if n is equal to 9, uh, the first line here will push into the vector the value of 9 modulus 2, which is equal to 1. And after that, we will divide n by 2. In this case, n will become equal to 4. In the second iteration, we have n is equal to 4, then 4 modulus 2 is equal to 0. So I will push back the 0 value into my vector after the 1 value, and then n will be equal to 2. 
then n equal to 2 at the third iteration you have 2 modulus 2 is equal to 0 and n is divided by 2 so it will become equal to 1 and the last iteration will be pushing 1 modulus 2 into the vector and n will become equal to 0 and my uh, program will exit the loop so these are the values that are pushed inside the vector. This is the inverted order of the uh, binary number, the binary digits. Uh, but here in this case for n equal 9, it doesn't matter because it's symmetrical. So 1001, if you invert it, you will always get 1001. If you take, for example, n equal to 10, uh, your vector will be 0101. So the binary number 10 uh, is 1010. So this should be taken into account when we are continuing our program. And in this case, I will run my digits in reversed order. So I will start with the last element of my vector. So for int i, the index i is at v dot size minus 1, which is the index of uh, the last number in the vector v. And as long as i is positive, I will decrement i. So I'm running the vector in reversed order. Every time I will read as 0, I will increment my counter b. So my integer b here is the 0 counter. If vi is equal to 0, I increment b, my 0 counter. Otherwise, if vi is equal to 1, I will check if my new b counter value is higher than the maximum in this case, I will store its value in the new, in the maximum b, in the max b uh, variable. So max b will be holding the maximum value of b that I have reached so far. And then I will reset b to 0 because I encountered 1, so I finished my sequence, so my counter will be reset to 0. We continue looping inside of this for loop until we have exhausted all our uh, elements in the v vector. And when I'm done, I can simply return uh, the maximum value, the maximum number that I have reached uh, counting the number of zeros. So this is it for, uh, uh, for the C++ version. Let's go and see the Python version. So in Python, it's uh, the same algorithm. We have a different way of defining a function, def solution, the name of the function then n the parameter. Notice here we don't uh, specify the type of the parameter. Python will take care of this automatically. And then we can use the binary function. Here we have a privilege. We have a function that will convert our number n into a binary format automatically. Only the first two digits will be 0 and b, so we have to skip those. This is how the binary function works. It will return uh, the binary sequence but then there are two characters that are added at the beginning i don't want these i'm skipping these and then i will define my uh, counter of zeros b equals zero and then the maximum value of uh, the counter max b equals zero then in the for loop i will loop over all the digits of my binary n number here and if uh, k is equal to 0, I have to cast k into an integer because I'm taking one digit, so sometimes it's considered as a character or a string of characters. Just to make sure Python doesn't do this, I have to cast it into an integer. Well, this is one of the differences between working in Python and C++. In C++, since we already specified the type of the variable at the beginning, we don't have to do it later on. It will always be an integer. However, here in Python, it's done automatically. And then if we want to force it into a certain type, we have to cast to the desired type. Anyway, if k is equal to 0, then I will increment my 0 counter, which is my variable b here, b plus equal to 1. And if not, if k is equal to 1, my maximum will become equal to the maximum value between b and the max b. So max b will always hold the maximum value or the highest value that was reached by b. And then I will reset b to 0. And when my program finishes looping over all the uh, digits of my binary number n, I will return the maximum value of b, the max b value. Okay, that's it uh, for now. These are the two solutions in C++ and Python. I will not spend more time on uh, explaining this problem because it's considered relatively easy. And I hope I have helped some beginners here to understand better uh, this problem and its solutions. Good luck to you and see you next time.